Hello and welcome. This is Henry Fales, Director of the Enterprise Federation Foundation. I'd like to talk about the building of the Enterprise. To build the Enterprise, we are going to need not only public donations, but volunteers as well. People of all skill levels to share their time and talent. Do you have an idea that would help this project along? Would you like to be one of those people to actually help build the Enterprise? If so, simply go to the EnterpriseFederation.com website and fill out one of the forms there. Let's build the Enterprise together. We can donate or offer to be a volunteer at the EnterpriseFederation.com website. With the help of volunteers like you, we can accomplish what others haven't. The fact is, the future of space travel is now in our hands. We can now have the opportunity to make space travel a priority, a priority which will benefit our economy and our science. We are still discovering new things about space and continually revising our theories. Science definitely does not have all the answers. You may ask yourself, how can building the Enterprise benefit anyone? The history of space flight has shown us that building, designing, and challenging ourselves leads to new inventions, which will benefit both our economy and scientific discoveries alike. This preliminary design is a view of the framing responsible for the Enterprise's shape. Building the Enterprise as a much larger ship allows us more freedom to design and build elements such as research laboratories, living quarters, a cafeteria, etc. on board. Designing personal living quarters will be one of the primary design goals. If you have a design idea, feel free to send us an email. In Star Trek, the Starship Enterprise has rooms with automatic sliding doors, full-size beds, closets, drawers, and the computer station. In our Enterprise, we will have to be very economical in our design. Living space will be more like a submarine than like a hotel room. A bed may simply be a sleeping bag and some Velcro. Closet space may consist of a three foot by six foot locker. The computer station will consist of a laptop tied into the main computer and bolted to your workstation. For long term space flights, how much living space will our astronauts need to maintain a social and mental health balance? These are the type of questions to be answered on a continual basis. The longer the voyage is to be, then more living space per individual will be required, at least in my opinion. This is an artist's concept of a simple ramjet engine design. Ramjets work most efficiently at supersonic speeds around Mach 3. This type of engine can operate at speeds above Mach 6. Ramjet technology has been around since the 1900s. This type of engine may be modified in design to fit our needs for ground to space flight type operations. The traditional rocket engine is just not an option for the use within our atmosphere. We cannot afford the extra weight of the fuel needed to operate this type of engine when we have the atmosphere available to us. The rocket engine may be our only choice currently for use once we are in space, for trips to the moon and or Mars, etc. Although for longer duration flights, there may be other options. The plasma engine may be one of those options. There has been a lot of progress in the plasma drive area as of late. But can plasma drives get us to Mars in a month? And if so, how much power do we need? If we can power multiple engines at one time, is this a viable choice? The plasma engine uses a gas like hydrogen or helium and turns it into a plasma stream. The exit velocity can increase our space travel to speeds beyond anything we have achieved to date. But to achieve this higher speed takes time and may not be a practical use today. Missions to Mars and or to the moon with current day technologies may leave us to still rely on old fashioned rockets. Fusion power. I don't believe is realistic for today's use. In the future, however, it may become the one that is the most beneficial. In the future, cold fusion, if it becomes a true source of energy production, we can then generate both energy and propulsion through the use of fusion. Today, nuclear fusion is too heavy and dangerous to be hauling large quantities into space. Our launch success is not at 100% level. Why risk the disaster? This picture is the vision of our future goals. 
Someday we will build a real and very large spaceship, one that will head out to galaxies unknown on a mission to explore and discover the wonderful and exciting things out there. I personally want to be a part of the history that helped in that future mission. How about you? Come join us in this exciting adventure. Thanks for listening.